Hi everyone, my name is Kate, welcome back to my Wonder 19 channel and today I will be answering the question that you have asked me on my Instagram. I will divide the questions into three blogs. Blog about moving in Vietnam and living here, blog about crocheting and blog about my personal life. If in this video I wouldn't answer your question, please don't be upset, next time I will definitely answer it. Also, you can additionally ask me something in the comments under this video. Let's chat, I will answer the questions in the comments too. But before we start, I know you will ask me about this cardigan and the tutorial to this cardigan. I have a writing pattern and video tutorial in this writing pattern. It's available only on my Etsy or on my coffee. And let's do the thing. If you will use this promo code golden hour you will get 15% off to this pattern on my Etsy during this day so I hope you will enjoy your crocheting and let's back to the questions for those who don't know three months ago we moved from Europe to Vietnam before that we lived in Poland for a year and a half and before that we lived in Ukraine reasons of moving and why did you guys choose Vietnam? The main reason is to try something completely new for ourselves, to live in different culture with different traditions and you know I've been in many countries in Europe and I really like the European architecture and the lifestyle and I really like Europeans small cities. Probably I want to live like in Krakow or like Prague. These are the cities that I love with all my soul. But Asia has also attracted me so much with its traditions, with its beauty, culture and color. Special sense of style, maybe, I don't know. People here are completely different in a good way. Also, my husband wanted to live in Asia sometime too. So we came here and why it's Vietnam? And here it comes the second reason of our moving. It finances. For the same cost of living, like we lived in Europe, here we can afford much more. Vietnam is an inexpensive country, but well developed. In Thailand, which I also liked a lot, the cost of living is about the same as in Europe, at least in Bangkok maybe a little bit cheaper. So the two main reasons are we wanted new experience in our lives and the lower cost of living but the same quality. What's your biggest culture shock after moving to especially Southeast Asia country? I can probably highlight you two biggest ones. First one is about bikers here. There are a huge amount of bikers here and no one lets you go through a crosswalk on the road. I mean, not at all. I mean, you need to follow your instincts to safely cross the road. Of course, you won't get hit if you're already standing in the middle of the road, I hope. But in these moments, you think, just give me two seconds to safely cross the road. With my husband, it's somehow calmer to cross the road, but with myself, it immediately seems that your shoe will fly off or your bag will fall or you will fall because you're trying to cross the road faster. It's the first culture shock for me. The second culture shock is about beaches. We live in Da Nang city and this is the sea town. And the culture shock for me is that no one lying on the beach and no one gets their sunbathing. Yes, I know that in Asia people have different attitude to the topic of the sun damage and they're trying to minimize their contact with it. Personally for me I'm surprised because everyone go to the beach at 5 a.m. The sun at this time is not so high and not hit you too much so why just not to lying on the beach on the blanket? the people just go into the sea swimming a little bit and that's all they just go to their homes or to their hotels why don't you want to lay on the beach at 5 a.m and go to swim several times not one time and go to the home right away maybe a few people do that for example in europe or in my home country the beaches are filled with people lying on the beaches and they can spend all the day just laying on the beach not saying that lying on the beach all day it's a good idea of course not but why people don't do that at 5 a.m when the sun isn't so high it's just sunrise 
So it's interesting for me and I think it's the second biggest culture shock for me. Also, I noticed that there are a lot of old people who are training at the beach at 5 a.m. or even earlier. They're so good. I was very surprised by that too. How do the local people treat you as a foreigner? Very friendly. We had no negative experience with local people here. Everyone wants to help us if needed or they are friendly for us if we treat them with respect, of course, too. Most of the locals just ask where we're from or how long we want to stay here. No one looks at us strangely or says anything bad, they just ask with interest. Question in Russian about the medicine here. How are the things with medicine here if you and your husband need a doctor or checkup? With medicine is everything good here. Thanks God we haven't needed something at hospital yet. Unless it's a serious matter, the cost of medicine is not too high. Here you can take all kind of tests. You can come to doctor without any appointment. That's what I read in the local expat groups. For example, my husband is going to go to the dentist soon to get the filling or how it calls in English, I don't know. It will cost $20 on average, which is not expensive. How difficult was the transition period for you? Is it difficult to live so far from family and friends? For me, it was difficult. I didn't even think that it would be so difficult. For example, in Poland, we lived with my sister. She's older than me and we have close relationship. And she didn't want to go with us to Vietnam. And it was really difficult for me to leave her alone there. My parents live in two practical cities. My dad works in Donetsk, my mom works in other city. And just the thought of when we will see each other well, makes me feel sad. And basically, until the war started, we all lived in one city. My family, my best friends, my relatives all close to me. We spent a really cool time together playing board games, riding bikes. We used to have a sister night, me, my sister and my cousin. But then it all started and we moved away and I really miss those times when we spent the time together. So yes. The harder thing to get used to is the heat, of course. I realized that the heat for me is worse than a cold. Here sometimes it's so humid and stuffy that I need to take a shower every couple hours. My husband is very with it, he tolerates the heat more easily and even likes it. But we came here in the hottest season and we'll see what happens in the winter. How do you deal with the noise in the Vietnam? We visited several places, including Da Nang, and all was noise. Noisy. Yes, it's really noisy here, but we live in a quiet neighborhood, it's a narrow street, there are no karaoke or bars. For us it's not a problem, but when we just came here, we lived in a hotel and about 3 o'clock in the morning, I hear someone singing in karaoke or yelling than singing, and it was so funny. But the main thing before renting the place here is to see on maps that there is no big road near your place or different bars. Is it very expensive moving there and what stuff did you consider bringing? The flight itself is quite expensive. From Europe it's two flights, five and a half hours each. So the flight along is a big expense. From the stuff we took here it's only necessary all warm clothes like jackets, boots or scarf we left in Poland or gave it away. As here it won't be useful for us. So in general we came here just with two large suitcases. Is it difficult to communicate? No. We practically don't communicate with locals a lot. If we do, it's in English and if they don't understand English, we use the translator. And no one here takes offense to that. Actually, there are a lot of questions about food. I can tell you right away that almost all Vietnamese food is not suitable for us. I mean traditional cuisine. Because we don't eat meat, fish, we are vegetarians, but at the same time there is no problem here with that kind of food. There are a lot of vegetarian and vegan restaurants here where the food is really good. What I liked from Vietnamese cuisine is bach mi. It's uh, like a sandwich with filling and um, we tried vegetarian one. 
And what I want to try but is still hesitating, it's durian. It's very popular here and I can't even imagine what it tastes like. And why everyone loves it so much if it smells bad. The most interesting thing that we've eaten here, it's hard to say because we're vegetarians, but exotic fruit that I've never tried before, I eat all the time now. Like passion fruit or dragon fruit. Is it a permanent move or are you in temporary visa and how easy difficult was it for you? At this moment we don't consider Vietnam as the permanent residence, it's temporary. But how long this temporary will last we don't know because we haven't decided um, which country we want to stay in permanently. As a girl, do you feel safe in Asia? Yes, why not? It's safe enough here. What's the living cost expenses for living like? Well, let me put it this way. If you have monthly budget of $1,000, you will not deny yourself anything here. I think you can live here even if you have $600 a month. It's with the rent, with the food and with entertainment. Small apartments here could cost you like $250. I'm sure there are people who live here like even less than $600 per month. Why are the yarns cheaper or more expensive in Vietnam? Yes, it's cheaper than in Europe. For example, in Poland I can buy one skein uh, for $4 or maybe even $5. Here I can buy one skein for $2 or, or $1.5. What is the first thing you crocheted? I don't remember exactly what year it was, maybe around 2015, I crocheted a top for myself. Following some YouTube tutorial, how do you change colors on a project? Quite simply, I just finish the stitch with new color, so when we have two loops on the hook, I just crochet them with new color. That's all. How do you sell your products and how should I price mine? Well, let's start with the fact that I don't sell the products right now, only the patterns. By the way, check out my Etsy and coffee. If it's a physical item, the cost should include uh, the cost of all materials. Ideally, you should add all the costs, even the electricity. Basically, you can multiply the cost of item by two or three if you're a beginner. For advanced crocheters, the cost should be multiplied by at least four or even more, but the quality and service should correspond. Also, you can count how much you would like to earn um, by crocheting um, based on your experience and your knowledge per month after deducting all the expenses. Also analyze the cost of competitors who sell the same products as yours, put the same or not too much higher price. Unless you know that you are higher than others in skills and knowledge. How are you so confident about your pattern? I always destroy it because I am not trust the process. What makes you think that I do everything perfectly the first time? <laughs> Before I create a pattern, I do a lot of test patterns. I sit and try to figure out how to make the pattern I want. It may look easy from the outside, but the reality is that I can sit like weeks or a couple of weeks trying to come up with some interesting idea. And it's totally okay if you redo your work many times because you want it to be perfect for your pattern. That's why I advise everyone to draw a sketch at first to see how your pattern will look like. And then in the small steps, searching for interesting solution, you get your perfect pattern. What is your favorite thing to crochet? Honestly, something complicated, like sweaters or cardigans. Something that you can sit and think about it. It feels like solving difficult problem and you get satisfied by solving it. But those kind of projects take up a lot of time. Can you please add in your tutorial how to make the different sizes? I think in all my tutorials I tell you how to make a bigger size. Adding different sizes, it will be a lot of information on the screen and a lot of inscriptions. Second of all, it would take a lot of time for me. In my writing patterns, I spell out the different sizes and that's why they are paid and not free. And I spend much more time to make writing pattern and video tutorial for it 
then I do just video tutorial, regular video tutorial on my YouTube. Plus, I always specify how many skeins of yarn you might need, so from that you can work from. I think it's better than knowing that you need just a yarn without knowing how much. I think I do enough detailed tutorial and they are all free on my YouTube and I don't want to spend my time uh, to adjusting the different sizes. But if I mature to create a sponsorship on my channel, then perhaps I will add different sizes in those tutorials. Where do you get inspiration from to crochet knit all of these beautiful pieces? Well, at first, thank you for beautiful pieces. I will answer briefly on Pinterest. I just look at ordinary clothes, not crocheted, ordinary clothes, and inspired by it. How did you turn your crochet hobby into literally a job? Sorry for my bad English. It's not that bad. I think mine's worse. For example, creating your own design and getting paid for the patterns. Or sell physical items, but here it's important to choose what direction you want. For example, only clothes or only accessorizes and develop in this direction. Because if you will offer everything at once, it will be difficult difficult to everyone to choose what to buy from you. Also, you can create a YouTube channel and earn from monetization. In each way, you need to develop your social media, make good quality content, make good quality items that you want to sell, make beautiful pictures because beautiful pictures attract a lot of people. So, consistency and quality, then you will gain a small audience at first, but then it will grow bigger and bigger. The main thing is not to quit and always improve the quality of your physical product or YouTube video video or maybe digital product. What my typical day looks like? Let me just show you this video and you will see for yourself. Did your family visit you already? No, they didn't yet and I really wish they could come here in winter. Were you able to make real-life friends after you move? Honestly, I don't know. There are a chat rooms for expats who came here and live here for a long time and maybe you can meet someone there, but I haven't taken that initiative yet and I don't need it too much. Um, I chat with my best friend online, my husband is my best friend too, with whom I can talk about everything. How do you motivate yourself every day when you work from home? I motivate myself with certain goals that I set for myself. For example, better life. So when I'm down, yes, I sat for a while and it's normal, but then I remember that no one but me will make my life that way that I want it. If I'm not feeling good at home, I can always go to the coffee shop and work there, maybe editing some videos or I came up with some ideas. Do you plan to travel to any other Asian countries? Yes, I do. I really want to visit Japan, South Korea, Philippines, China and of course Thailand again. I really like the Bangkok city. I would like to live there for a while. But my husband didn't like the noise of the city and the fast pace of the city and i really like the atmosphere and when we were there i looked at everything with my open mouth because of the wonder and beauty what job do you and your husband do in vietnam isn't it difficult to switch workplaces as you move on my youtube is my job and my instagram is my job my husband is working online too so it's easy for us in terms of traveling Working online makes you very mobile. Doesn't mastering the language of the country in which you currently reside constitute an obstacle for you? No, I don't plan to learn Vietnamese language deeply. I would like to learn English at first. <laughs> Vietnamese language seems for me uh, difficult in pronunciation. But of course, I will learn some basic phrases that I will need in usual life. 
How did you grow your account to where it's now? If we're talking about YouTube, it's a constant regular posting, the content that will be interesting to everyone, not just a certain narrow audience. If we're talking about Instagram, my account has grown thanks by Reels and constant posting too several videos of million of views even though i didn't do anything special to get such results i remember when i got my first million video i was shocked by the way who remember that video was about wings crochet club i think here works nostalgia factor plus crocheting and then usual results then you need to repeat the format of content that works the best for you and dilute it uh, with other content that it's not so much popular on your account in general i advise you to try different formats different shootings editings and you will succeed what did you study or what was your job before being a content creator youtuber i studied business administration and economics and i graduated in uh, 2021 when i got my master's degree while i was studying i worked as a cashier in a clothing store maybe for about half a year it actually was a covid times after the job i went straight into art at first i sold my uh, physical products i made macrame bags macrame wall hangings crochet bags after that i started holding offline workshops where i taught others how to crochet and how to do macrame by the way, at those classes, many people have noted my ability to explain things correctly and show how to do what they do. <laughs> Perhaps I would have been a good teacher. Then the war has been started. It was in 2022 and I have to close my offline workshops because it was dangerous. And then I started to lead my first Russian YouTube channel for those who went to my workshops and now they could make something, crochet something at their home. And yes, for those who didn't know, I still have two YouTube channels, this one and that one in Russian. So YouTube in the Russian language is my first YouTube and only after half a year I started to lead this YouTube channel because we moved to Poland. And I think it's the last question. Uh, what is your style of dressing? What top clothing stores brands in Vietnam? I can't say that I dress in a certain style, but I like more casual downtown style. And my favorite favorite clothing brands in Vietnam are these ones. I think that it was all the questions for today, but if you are still interested in anything else, please ask me in the comments and I will answer you in the comments too. So let's chat in the comments. And I thank you for all your questions, for all kind of words for me. It really means a lot to me. And see you in the next video. Bye kiddos!